On the 8th of December, 1542, Mary of Guise gave birth to a healthy baby girl. Mary of Guise was the queen consort to James V of Scotland. Well, James V died only six days later and the new baby girl would be Mary, Queen of Scots. Mary's father, James V, had come to the throne when he was only one year old. So Scotland had been in this position before of having an infant monarch, but of course this was a double whammy. She was a baby and she was a she. And we're going to wind the story back to 1503, when Henry VII sent his eldest daughter, Margaret, to marry James IV of Scotland. This was supposed to be, you know, a union of a marriage union, a personal union, which would help the two countries within the same island to get on a bit better. However, that was not going to last for very long. At the Battle of Flodden against the English in 1513, James IV was killed and James V came to the throne. Well, the two nations were at it again a few decades later and James V died after fighting the English at Solway Moss. He was only 30 years old and his successor was his six-day-old daughter, Mary. On hearing that his newborn child was a girl, James famously said, it came with a lass and it will pass with a lass. So I thought I'd take the opportunity today to tell you what James was meaning when he said that. So the first part of what James said, it came with a lass. Well, he was talking about the beginning of the Stuart dynasty. So it came with a female lass, a girl, a woman. And he was referring back to Marjorie Bruce. Marjorie Bruce was the daughter of Robert the Bruce, King of Scotland, and she had married Walter Stewart, the sixth uh, high steward of Scotland. At this point, let me tell you about the name Stewart because it could have been different. The family name had been Fitzalan, but the Fitzalans had had this role of high steward of Scotland by the time Marjorie Bruce married Walter Stewart, he was the sixth steward of Scotland. So a few generations back, it had been changed from Fitzalan to steward because that had been their title, that had been their role in the, uh, in the royal household. And so they changed their name, steward became Stuart. And so James was referring back to Marjorie Bruce marrying Walter Stewart, and their son had eventually become king. When Robert the Bruce died, the throne had passed to his son David, who became David II of Scotland. But when he died childless in 1371, the throne passed to the son of Walter Stewart and Marjorie. His name was Robert Stewart. So it was via Marjorie Bruce that the Stuarts became kings of Scotland. And so the second part of James's exclamation, it will pass with a lass. Well, he was wrong, but that's us looking back with hindsight. So did James actually just think, no, this is it, this is the end for the Stuart line, it's going to die out with my newborn daughter? But to be fair to James, he was living in a time where childhood mortality was high, he was far more familiar with death than he was with people surviving, and so his, the chances were that he genuinely would just have believed, for good reason, that the line, the Stuart line, was unlikely to continue. It required this six day old baby girl growing up and healthy, marrying and having children. We know that Mary grew up to be Queen of Scotland in her own right. She was Queen Consort of France for a time and she battled for her entire life to be named heir to the throne of England, which of course we know got her into a lot of trouble. We also know that she had children and it was her son, James VI, who was the first joint monarch of Scotland and England. And it is his line, or her line, but the Stuart line, which led to the union of Scotland and, uh, and England actually became the, um, the United Kingdom of Great Britain. And the Stuart line didn't die out until the 18th century with its last monarch, Queen Anne. And so James sadly died thinking that his death was going to lead to the end of the Stuart line. We know it didn't.